Hey yeah, hope it is going great. In this tutorial, you will learn how to secure your REST API using token authentication and we'll also take a look at session authentication. So let's get started. We want to start out in a settings of Pi by setting the authentication and permission classes globally. Let's first of all set the REST underscore framework equal to a new dictionary, which is where our settings are going to go. Then we'll set the default authentication classes to rest underscore framework dot authentication dot token authentication and we also are going to set the default underscore permission classes to rest underscore framework dot permissions dot is authenticated this is basically just a setting that is required in order to access any of our API views and we just declare that we need to be authenticated in order to access them. And because we set the authentication classes to token authentication, that means we need to authenticate via a token. Now open up two command lines, one of which you are going to use to run a server. So manage to apply run server. In the other one, we want to install a package called HTTP. I hope that's the way you pronounce it, I don't know pip install http and now that we have that let's try to send a get request to the api snippets list view http without the ie at the end now and by default it's going to be a get request http colon slash slash localhost 8000 then slash api and snippets Now, because we set the authentication and permission classes, we need to, of course, provide an authentication token. And you could, for example, use a post save signal to generate one as soon as a new user has been created. And if you want to take that approach, I'm going to leave a link down in the description for the official documentation. But in this case, we're going to use a separate API endpoint to actually send a request to with our username and a password and then get a token back. So first of all, we want to go to the urls.py and we want to create a new path to api-token-auth and the view we are going to call is provided by the REST framework. There's also a generic view which we can override if we want some custom behavior. But for now, let's go ahead and use the function-based one. Views.obtain underscore auth token and we're going to set the name to api-token-auth And then from rest framework dot token import views. I will also need to make sure that in our settings of Pi, we actually go to our install apps and include rest underscore framework dot token. If we try to visit that path in our browser, you can see that the method get is not allowed. And what we have to do is send a post request, as I said, with the username and password to obtain a new token. And we are of course going to need to create one first. So let's make that a super user. Manage.py create super user. And I'm going to set the username to my user and then just choose a password. Okay. And let's now run our server again. Let's now again use HTTP, but this time a post request to HTTP colon slash slash local hosts. 8000 and this time it was called API and let's now include the username as my user and the password to whatever you selected and I actually forgot to do something very important which is to migrate of course mention by migrate because with the auth token we got a new model Okay, let's now run a server again. And then we can hit the up arrow to go back to our previous command. And you can see that we now get a nice token which we can use for authentication. Let's go ahead and copy that. And we can now send a get request to our API snippets list view. So HTTP and then HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8000. API snippets and a trailing flash. And now open a new string 
and say authorization and then a colon and then token and then paste in the token we just got from the API endpoint. And as you can see, we have received our two snippets from the API, which means that everything has worked fine. Of course, you wouldn't do this from the command line normally, but you know, from some sort of, for example, mobile application, which is where you could use token authentication. That would be a pretty good use case. Now we want to quickly cover session authentication and see where they differ and when to use which. Let's go back to our settings.py and set this to session authentication. And in order to make this work, we are going to have a login view for our actual front end. So from django.contrib.auth.views, import login. And just for quick convenience, we are going to include this right underneath. So make a path to login, which calls views.login. And actually the views is not required because we imported the login function directly. And we're quickly going to create a new template under registration and login.html and in here we want to quickly create a new form with the method of post and spit out the form we get by default and then just a new button with the type of submit and make sure to also include the CSRF token in our login view, let's now quickly log in. And if we now try to navigate our API and snippets, you see that we still have access to this view because we are logged in via the default, you know, Django way, which is basically what session authentication is about, about using the default schema that Django has to log into our API. And you can see that if we aren't logged in, we get an authentication credentials were not provided error, which means that we can access the API. So everything is working fine. And there are also other types of authentication, which I won't go into for now, but you can check them out in the documentation, of course, if you want to learn more about them. And just real quick, instead of having the options in the settings of Pi for which authentication schema to use, we can also delete that. And in our view sets, we can set the authentication underscore classes equal to, for example, token authentication and the permission classes to is authenticated. And then you would need to import them from rest framework dot authentication. And also from rest framework dot permissions. And that's how you can set the authentication and permission classes on a per view set basis. Now, as far as to when to use which, either token authentication or session authentication, the official documentation says that the session authentication is appropriate for Ajax clients that are running in the same session context as your website. The token authentication would be for client server setups, such as native desktop and mobile clients, which of course are completely decoupled from each other and are not running on the same session. And as a side note, make sure to have your API under HTTPS when using token authentication. Otherwise, people will be able to sniff your network under HTTP and get the actual token, which is of course not what you want. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any videos. Have a great day and cheers.